Australia. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Special thank you to everybody who's coming from India. Half 11 at night, you are very committed. It's very much appreciated. I will try and make sure that the content is enjoyable and informative. Raj, just quick thumbs up. See that okay? Yeah. Yeah, thank Super. you. All right. Brilliant. So welcome, everybody, to the five types of motivation. Hopefully, you sat there thinking, five? What does that mean? So let me tell you. So this is my business, as Raj says. This is the mission statement of my business. It's very much focused on learning, relationships, long kind of long vision. Um, just very, very proud to represent my company. And this is the, I do a lot of online training sessions and I like to provide what's called transformative learning. There's lots of different ways to learn and everybody has a different style and everybody has a different take on it. And what I found is if you include these three things, you will get a lot from tonight's session. So you're going to get some information on learning. That's obviously very important, but it's not enough. You could just, you could Google that. The second thing is hopefully I can help you to think about motivation, maybe in a slightly different way. If you can change the way you think or a person thinks, that can change everything. And thirdly, you have to have something practical. There has to be a, some practical benefit or application that you can apply Maybe not tonight when you go to bed, <laughs> but tomorrow in the future, in your life, that benefits you from that session. And if you get those three things, it will help to transform your life. All right. So these are the key learning objectives. Just three. Nothing too heavy tonight. The first is it's, it's a unique model, this, the five types of motivation, because I made it up. <laughs> it comes from lots of experience in the public sector, private sector, teaching people, figuring out how do you actually motivate people and yourself. So it's a unique model, this. You can't find it anywhere else. The second thing is everybody's different. What motivates one person might not work for somebody else. So it's there'll be a chance for you to kind of reflect on what will work for you. And the third thing is I like to help people to move from thinking about motivation as an infrequent feeling. Like it comes and it goes. You're motivated, you're demotivated. I want to be more like a repeatable process, you know, like the process of brushing your teeth. OK, so those are the three things we're going to cover. And this is how I'd like you to interact this evening. So if you, you know, it depends on how you are today. You might be tired. But if you can, I'd like you to have a pen and a piece of paper, because I like to make my sessions very interactive and I like people to be as involved as possible. So if you can hunt down yourself a pen and some paper, you'll only need one sheet, just one sheet and a pen. So give yourself a few seconds to go and find some because I recommend that you make notes. You're going to end up with a model, something drawn today. And that's really, really important because I always say after any training session, don't try and remember it. Let it wash over your head, but keep your notes. Yeah, you might make one thing you think, do you know what, that note, that's really important then. So make notes, please make notes. And I'd like people to interact. And one of the quickest and most effective ways is the chat box. So if you've been on these sessions before, you'll see there's a little thing that says chat. And you can type in answers. And I'd like you to talk to me. It's just a really good way to get some good feedback and on an ongoing basis throughout the session, you can talk to me. The last thing before we get started is um, I'd like you to ask questions. I'd like if you could have your questions at the end and really try and ask a question, because this is the possibly the only time you're ever going to meet me in your life, you know. Um, so when you ask a question, you're thinking, hmm. How does this apply to my life? What about this, Mike? What about this person? What about this context? I have this issue. How can this help me? So if you ask a question at the end, that can make the difference between you using this material or not, okay? So please don't just sit and watch. You'll probably forget most of it. <laughs> make notes, join in as we, as we go through. And if I have questions, if you could type in a chat box, that would be fantastic, okay? So let's just do something in the chat box while we're finishing getting our pens and paper ready. Just jump into the chat box and put a number from one to 10. How motivated do you feel right now? It's Sunday night, about to be a new week. You know, Monday's come in, new month coming, September. You know, a one is I'm feeling no motivation at all. And a 10 is I feel absolutely fantastic and I'm ready to go. Okay. So thank you, Jackson. Jackson straight away and he's got a two. All right. Any advances on two? Anyone? Threes, four, five, sixes. Roger sent one to me, he sent a seven. Okay. I'll put myself, now I'm, I'm a nine, but that's just because I love helping people to learn. So I'm feeling pretty motivated right now. Okay. And we've got, um, like we've got five and Kimar's got six. Okay. So thank you very much for sharing. Hopefully <laughs> by the end of the session, you'll feel more motivated, but it's more important than that. 
Okay, and we're going to come into that now. So thank you very much for jumping in the chat box. Let's get into it. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now because the mo majority of what we're going to do now just involves this and this. Okay, so if you turn your piece of paper sideways, we're going to start drawing now. Doesn't matter if you don't like drawing, if you're not very good at it, neither am I. But here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw ourselves a nice big square in the middle and cut it into four. So if you could do that now, please. Um, what that'll give you is you're going to have this to take away, you know, and then you've got it for the rest of your life. So we cut it into four. OK. And then once you've done that, I'd like to draw uh, like a frame around it. So it looks a little bit like a windowsill. So it looks a bit like that. Hopefully you can see that. OK. So the reason we're doing this, it's a little bit different. So it's more likely to stick in your brain. If you just make a load of notes, they just look like notes. But now you think, oh, what's this thing? Well, that looks a bit different. So your brain's more interested, okay? And then we're going to draw some lines because we're going to have some titles. So if you draw yourself a line in the top left, we're going to have a title there. Draw a line in the top right, got a title there. In the bottom left, but give yourself some space here in the bottom right. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four, and then right at the top. The hardest bit of this is labeling it. <laughs> All right, but once we've done that, you can relax. So we've drawn our box with our frame, and then we've got one, two, three, four titles, and then the title in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna label it now, and then we're gonna get into <clears throat> the different things. So if we start by going into the middle, and we call it the five types of motivation. Okay, that's what we're gonna be doing. So we type in the middle, five types of motivation. Okay, so that goes up here. And the reason I call it the five types is if you just think there's one, what if that doesn't work? <laughs> you know, what's plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E? So I found there's at least five different ways to motivate yourself. Okay, what we're gonna do now is here in the top left, we're gonna write the word important. Okay, so if we write important, and then we're going to start getting interactive in a second. So five types of motivation, important. The opposite of that goes here, not important. So we write the words not important. Okay. All right. So, so far, we've filled in those three titles. Yeah. Bottom left, we're going to write the words key points. Going to cover a lot of material but there's three kind of key points that if you just remember these one, two, three things, they're the most important things, okay? All right, and then last one, and then you can relax a little bit. On the right-hand side, the bottom right now here, you write tools, T-O-O-L-S, need some tools, okay? If you've got a, I don't know, a, a broken tap, leaking, you need a spanner, <laughs> all right. So let's get into it. So we're saying there's five types of motivation. We've drawn a little model. We're going to fill it all in. And all the way through now, I want you to be filling in this model, yeah, and reflecting. They might ask some more questions right in the chat box. But at the end of today, you'll walk away with this. And Raj will have a different one to Kumar. Kumar will have a different one to Kenny. You will all fill it in differently, which is good, yeah? It's unique to you. It's not just the same thing for everybody, all right? So the first thing I want you to do is go to where it says important. So we're here, yeah, outside the box, just here. And I want you to write three things now that are the most important things in your world. Just write them down. Hopefully they will just come to your mind. You think, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's important to me. That's important. And that's definitely very, very important to me. Try and do three, not just one or two. Okay. What's really actually very, very important to you in your life. And then when you've done that, just pick one of them. And if you could write it in the chat box, that would be brilliant. I'd love to know because I'm always curious what's important to people. Okay. So we've written down what's actually important to you in your life. Three things, top left. And we're going to reflect and say, okay, well, just pick one of them and, and you know, share with the group. By the way, everything you say is confidential. You don't want to share. You don't have to, obviously. Um, but if you want to, then you can. All right. So thank you to the people who started sharing. So Raj has put God and family and health. Brilliant. And Mayank has put work and job. And Jackson has put family. Brilliant. Brilliant. 
There's no right or wrong answers with this. What's important to you is what's important to you. The important thing is to reflect on it. Now, it's really interesting, Kumar's put health. Pretty much every single person I've ever done this with, no matter what country they're in, whether it's India, Bangladesh, England, Australia, Belgium, they all write family, which is a nice one, isn't it? They all write family. Everybody says their families are important. We've proven there. Agnes has put family. Lovely. So it's very important before we even try and motivate ourselves to do things, we think, why are we doing it? You know, who's it for? And it's for those reasons on your list, okay? The important things. So now we're going to go to the right-hand side, to the opposite side. And this time, where it says not important, I just want you to write one thing. Now, this might be a little bit harder, because if I say to you what's not important, that's a bit different, isn't it? It's a bit harder than that. If you can think of something, great, write it down. If you struggle, I'll give you a bit of help on this one. Some people write status. Some people write other people's opinions of them. Some people are not too bothered about money. Some people are not too bothered about, they write things like, I don't like negativity. It's not important to me. Okay. So for that one, just write one thing. And the reason we're doing this is not everything can be important all the time. Not everything's going to motivate you. All right. So whatever's on your not important list, that's not going to motivate you very much, is it? <laughs> Whereas the things on your important list hopefully should. So we've reached the first two key points that we're going to write down now, okay? So I'm just a bit of background noise, I think, from Sergio. So if you're happy for me to just mute that, that's okay. All right, just from some background noise. So if we go to where it says key points, let's write the first key point. Very important. So if you write number one, key point, and we're going to write motivation is subjective. Okay. And I'll write in the chat box. It's really, really important. Motivation is subjective, meaning it depends on the subject. It depends on you. There's no such thing as objective motivation. If I give you the equivalent of $10,000, you're probably going to be quite happy and say, thank you very much, Mike. That's lovely. If I tried to give that to Donald Trump, he'd be like, why are you just insulting me with $10,000? That's my Donald Trump impression. <laughs> so it's all dependent on the subject. What works for you, what's on your important list, great. But it might not be on mine, and that's okay. And this is where people struggle. They get this, well, it's really important, maybe to you, but maybe not to somebody else. So the second key point, we've already reached two key points. So if you write number two at key points, this is really, really an important one. One of the questions people ask me about this, they say, Mike, how can I motivate myself to do things that I don't want to do? We all have to, don't we? Or how can I motivate somebody else to do something at work or at school or in the family they don't actually want to do? Well, this is the answer. If you write down number two key point, link motivation to importance. Link motivation to importance. So if you link it, to what they care about, what's on their important list, they're going to be motivated. So if we take an example that somebody shared, if we go to Kenny and Kenny's put health, Kenny, Kenny's trying to motivate himself about his health. He's probably going to be quite interested. If he's trying to motivate himself about something that's on his not important, list, he's not really going to care. So what he has to do is think, well, how can I link that back to something I do care about? Okay. So just look at your important list and think, how can I link it back to that? Because we all have things we don't like to do. But if we can link them back to things that we care about and how it's going to help our family, our friends, our health, our work, then we're going to be more motivated to do it. Okay. So you can see it gets quite deep this straight away. It's not like do this and you'll be motivated. It's very personal to the person. Remember that second key learning objective it depends on you. Okay. What works for Kumar might not work for Jackson. And that's fine, by the way. All right. So we're going to go into the box now. So what we're going to do is we're going to number them one, two, three, and four, and then the outside is five. So I'll explain what I mean. If we go into this little box here, I want you to write number one, please, at the top left box. That's the first box, box number one. Okay. So we just write number one. Then box number two is going to be your top right. So it goes one, two. Yeah. Then box number three in the bottom left, and box four. So one, two, three, four. And if you look really carefully. Nox number five is the frame around the outside. See what I did there? <laughs> so they're the five types. And the reason we draw it like that is rather than just writing notes, it's more visual. You can take it in more. You can look at it and go, oh, yeah, 
number one, rather than just pages and pages of notes. Okay. You guys are doing very well for a Sunday evening. <laughs> so, so far, we've gone, right, what's important and what's not? And we've gone, okay, but there are two key points to keep in mind. Motivation to motivate yourself is very subjective. What works for you might not work for other people. Keep that in mind, please. Definitely learn that. And if you're trying to motivate yourself or somebody else to do something they don't want to do or be a particular way, link it to something they care about. How do you do that? Ask them what's important to them. Just ask them, say, what would, give me three things that are important to you in your life. And I've never had a person that can't respond to that. They might not come up with three, but they'll at least come up with one or two. And you talk to them about those things rather than stuff they don't care about. It's like people that are into rugby or cricket. Yeah, talk to them about rugby and cricket. Don't talk to them about football. <laughs> okay. Right. So these five types all start with the letter F. The reason I've done that is to make it more memorable. If something's memorable, you're going to remember it. Therefore, you're more likely to apply it. I like to keep solutions simple because motivating yourself and life in general, especially at the moment, can be very complicated and it can be very difficult and very tiring. So if your solutions are simple and easy, then you're more likely to be able to use them. Yeah. If they're complicated and difficult, chances are you're not always going to use them that often. So let's keep them memorable. So number one, I'm going to write the word in the chat box because it's a bit of an unusual word, is fleeting. F-L-E-E-T-I-N-G. Fleeting. So if you write the, num the, the word fleeting by the number one, okay? And what we're going to do is draw yourself a little clock. If you like to draw, there's a chance to draw an emoji. Yeah. So fleeting, there's your little clock, if you can see that. So what does that mean? Fleeting is an old-fashioned English word that means it comes and it goes. So this is the first type. Let me blind down. This is the first type of inspiration. And this, this step one, guys, this is as far as most people get when they motivate themselves. They say, I'll wait till I feel like it. I don't feel like it just yet. I'm demotivated. I'm not very motivated. And they just expect themselves to just feel 10 out of 10. Nobody here this evening is 10 out of 10. I'm not 10 out of 10. But a lot of people seem to, and it's not an age thing. I've met older people and younger people that do this. They just, you know, they expect to be a 10 out of 10. But here's a really interesting number. I want you to write the number 168 in that box. So fleeting clock, 168. 168, that's the amount of hours we have in a week. So 24 times seven. So you could write 160 hours, okay? Now here's another chance to get in the chat box and interact. How many of those hours would you say you're highly motivated at the moment? So look back at last week, because we, we've not done next week. Think back to last week and go, how many of those hours was I really, really highly motivated? Obviously, you've got to sleep, right? So you might say, well, I don't know, a couple hours a day, seven days a week, maybe 14 hours. And just put the number in the chat box and be honest. You might say, no, no, mine was higher than that. I'd say four or five hours a day, plus a bit more at weekends because I spend time with my family. So my number's more like 30 hours a week or 40 or 50. Or you might be going through something really difficult at the moment. And you're like, not, not many, maybe like one a day if I'm lucky. Okay. So Raj has put 20. Raj, just a quick thing. If you just change your messages to everyone, because you're sending them to me privately, so it's no problem, all right? Just a, a small thing. So if you're happy to share your numbers in the chat box, great. If you're not, you don't have to, but please write them on your diagram. Yeah, put them on your diagram. So Jackson put 46, brilliant, thank you for sharing. And just by reflecting on that, no matter what your number is, if it's a lower number or a higher number, I've done this with people, Kuma saying 28, thank you, Kuma. I've done some people who said as low as nine. I had one person say 150. I said, when do you sleep? It didn't quite add up, right? But the reason, the reason we do this is no one ever writes 168. So that means what do we do in those hours when we're not highly motivated? Does that make sense? Yeah, so think about Jackson. He takes his 46 away from 168. What's that, 124 hours? Yeah. What's he going to do for those 124 more hours? Can't just expect yourself to feel fantastic if you don't. What can we do? And that's when most people get stuck and they give up. <laughs> and they go, I'm demotivated. I'll do it when I feel like it. And then they don't feel like it. So they don't do it. 
right? Now, I want to tell you something about the English language. We have a phrase that we say, you're a genius, yeah? So you're doing it, you're a genius. Yeah, Chris, you're a genius. Yeah, to mean you're really clever. But hundreds of years ago, we used to say, you have a genius. And we used to think that there were spirits and, and all sorts of wonderful creatures, and you come and have these genius moments, and they come into you and, and they give you this inspiration. You're motivated, you feel amazing, you do great stuff, and then they leave. And somebody else goes and becomes a genius. So they used to say, you have a genius rather than you are a genius. Now, I like that because we all have moments, don't we, where we just feel highly motivated for whatever reason. We hear a nice song on the radio. We get a piece of good news. I support Man United. So Ronaldo's coming back to Man United, right? Sorry if you support another team. <laughs> whatever it is, you have a nice meal, whatever. But you feel good. It's really, you feel really good. That's the first type of motivation. It's fleeting. It, it might last 20 minutes. But what I'd suggest is, if you write in, in box number one, do something with it. So please write that. Do something with it. Yeah, so when Kumar has got his 28 hours and he feels highly motivated, do something with those 28 hours. Yeah, use that energy. Enjoy it. Sometimes you just feel this fleeting moment of, oh, I just feel great. <laughs> Brilliant. That is wonderful. I have that. I'm going to put my number um, of how many hours I actually feel motivated, highly motivated during the week. I'm not joking. That's my number, guys, right? It's not as high as yours. So you might think, hmm? he's given a session on motivation. He's not that motivated. I am. I just use number two, number three, number four, and number five. I don't expect myself to feel great all the time and highly motivated all the time. I enjoy it when it comes. I enjoy having these moments of like, woo, feel great. But then when they don't happen, most of the time, I use number two, number three, number four, and number five, okay? And that's why this model helps. Because if you feel great, fantastic. But what do you do when you don't? We move on. So if we go into box two now, I'd like to write the word false. And next to the word false, so number two, the second way to motivate yourself, false motivation. I got a great story from the army about this. And what I'd like you to do is draw a little square, a rectangle next to it. And the little pictures help you to remember. And in that little square, I want you to write the name of your favorite chocolate bar. If you don't eat chocolate anymore, just think back to when you were a kid. <laughs> if you don't like chocolate, you could put a packet of crisps. But something personal, right? Something that you think, oh, I'd love a packet of that. If you want to share it in the chat box, I'm always keen to know what chocolate do you like? I've had some amazing suggestions over the years. People have said some amazing things here, right? Raj is straight in with a flake. I remember them. They're very classy chocolates, weren't they? Back in the days, like Cadbury's Flake, very classy chocolate. Uh, Mars bars, Twitters, whatever. But this little story involves a chocolate bar, and that's to help you to remember, yeah? So false motivation, chocolate bar, okay? Please share your chocolate bar in the, in the chat box. I'd love to know. So you're not feeling great, but you got to do stuff. How do you do it? This is how. So a friend of mine was in the army in the UK for 20 years. And they used to go out on drills where they'd have fake guns and they'd go out in the hills and mountains and they would not have any food. They'd be wet, they'd be cold, they'd be tired. You're not allowed to sleep. And they had to do these drills, right, to simulate real life combat. And the worst part was you're not allowed to know when it's over. So imagine like the pandemic, yeah? That's one of the hardest things about it, isn't it? When's it over? I don't know. You don't know. We don't know, do we? Especially last year, that was very difficult, wasn't it? It's very demotivating. And so these soldiers are very much the same. They're saying, Sarge, come on, when, when's this over? And say, like, I can't tell you, can't tell you, Private. It's over when you achieve the objective. And they're like, oh. So they're feeling really demotivated. They're struggling. And my friend, his name is Michael as well, goes to the sergeant and says, come on, Sarge, give us something to motivate us, something to hold on to. Goes, okay, okay, right. You see that hill over there? Yeah. Right. When it's over, everybody, all 20 of you, there's going to be a tank waiting there. Come pick us up. And everybody's going to get a hot cup of tea in a mug and a chocolate bar, a Mars bar. Really, Sarge? Yeah. Yeah. So, hot cup of tea and a Mars bar over there when it's done. Really? Yeah. Now, shut up and crack on. Okay. So, he goes and tells everybody, guys, 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 we're going to get a Mars bar. We're going to get some tea. Really? Yeah, yeah. Come on, let's let's do it. Let's do it. And the morale lifts. <laughs> and they achieve the objective. Now you can see where the story's going. 
They climb the hill. They're all really excited. They're talking. Get to the top of the hill. Say, Sarge, Sarge, wh- wh- where's the tank? What do you mean? The tank, you know, with the Mars bar and the tea and the... Oh, there's no tank coming to pick us up. You thought I was being serious? And they're all like, you lied to us, Sarge. You, he goes, hey, steady, private. No, I falsely motivated you. He said, what do you mean? He said, look, when you're on deployment in a different country on an operation, you're not going to get a gold medal waiting for the end of the day. It was the idea of having something to look forward to that got you through. The idea of the Mars bar, the idea of the tea, the idea of the tank, it raised your game. And you can do that whenever you want, every single day. It's called false motivation. I've just taught it to you. You're welcome. And my friend and the whole company just kind of went, oh, you could see it sinking in. And then just as the sergeant finished talking, they heard a rumble in the distance coming up the hill. And I said, what's that? He said, oh, it's the tank. You didn't think I was totally heartless, did you? And they really did get a cup of tea and they really did get a Mars bar. And they, and they were just like, oh, that's amazing. So I want you to think about false motivation, okay? How can you use your imagination to create things that may not even be real to motivate yourself? So, for example, imagine Raj thinks, right, I've just got to get through today and I'll have a flake waiting for me. (laughs) And he might not have the flake, okay, but the idea of the flake gets him through. Yeah, we're talking about your children, Raj, going to university and the idea of getting that first class degree, yeah, something to motivate yourself. And they got there, which is brilliant. So false motivation, you don't wait till things improve. And you don't need to wait until you feel like it. Okay. So I'll give you an example of this. I've got a picture here. Where is it? And last year I did an ultra marathon. That's 30 miles. And I've been stuck at home on my own, right? There's me and my dad, the little medal. (laughs) And I ran 30 miles, right? One day. Why? Because I'm a bit silly. But the point is I needed something to motivate myself to keep fit. There was no ultra marathon. But I came up with a route and said, I'm just going to do one. I didn't wait until the runs were open. I didn't wait for things. I didn't wait till I felt better. I created something. I used my imagination and thought, I'd love to do that. And why don't? And then you think, why not? So what I want you to think about is, think about that. Think, how can you falsely motivate yourself to get through the day? You don't need to feel great. You say, wouldn't it be great if we had that to aim for, right? Using your imagination. Okay. And one thing I'd like you to write down is if you write this person's name in box two, Dr. Sarah Gilbert, and I'll put her name in the chat box for you. So Dr. Now, she wasn't the only one, obviously, but she was one of the main two in the UK. Dr. Sarah Gilbert is one of the people who helped create the Oxford vaccine for um, the COVID virus. So just imagine, talk about practical application last year, in the UK and around the world as well. Obviously, there are other vaccines. Them setting down going, lots of people are dying. And she says with her team, I think we can manufacture a vaccine in a year. You know, that's the false motivation, isn't it? One year. There's no proof. But she's got this idea to aim for. And they did. And this is the thing. It's incredible the way this works. You know, I've done the marathon now. And it wasn't that bad. (laughs) Okay. I didn't wait until I felt better. So false motivation is a very powerful one. You can falsely motivate yourself every single day. Where most people get stuck is they, they, they wait for themselves to feel good. Don't wait. Carry on. And often your feelings catch up. So we're coming towards the third key point. So we're going to write it down now. Okay. Because time is flying, guys. Let's go back to where it says key points and go to number three now. And this is really, really important. So we're going to write down. Motivation, I'm going to do like a little formula, equals, motivation is equal to imagination plus logic. So I'll write it in the chat box. Motivation is equal to imagination plus logic. Sometimes, like false motivation, you've got to use your imagination. There's no proof. You've got to say, I think we can do this. And everyone says, you're mad. Maybe. Use your imagination. But then the second point is you can use logical motivation and the steps three, four and five. Now they're more logical motivation. That's mess. That's more misunderstood. So the third type is called future motivation. So now you're in box three and I want you to draw an arrow going up. So kind of like that. 
<laughs> doesn't matter too much but as long as the arrow is going up you know like those little emojis you get a stock market going up yeah future motivation going up all right so this is where we use a bit of imagination but also a bit of logic to motivate yourself so i want you to write this little phrase in the third box and i'll tell you about this because i've got a real cool story for this i'd like to write this you can never have too many things to look forward to I'll write that in a box you can never have too many things to look forward to all right if you've got children every single birthday they're going to get a good time aren't they <laughs> right holidays religious celebrations family times i don't know many people that ever reach you know four or five birthdays and go oh, that's enough now no more good times thank you or no that's too much love i don't i don't want that to look forward to or no 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 everybody wants things to look forward to and that especially last year and also a bit this year that can be very demotivating. If the things you're looking forward to, like a holiday, get cancelled. But you can never have too many things. So if you want to do something to motivate yourself this week, write a big list of things to look forward to. All right. And don't worry about when they're going to happen. So people say to me, yeah, I want to put holiday on there to motivate myself, but I don't know when it's going to happen. No, you don't. But it will. <laughs> and just knowing that is enough sometimes. Yeah. So using your imagination. But now we're going to start to get a bit logical. Have a look at these pictures. Can you see them on the wall? Yeah. Last year, I spent 12 weeks on my own in my house. Before in the UK, we had bubbles in pretty much solitary confinement in the first lockdown. You might have had a similar experience. It was tough. And that's why I really had to apply this and use a lot of this material to motivate myself. So I created something to look forward to. I went into false motivation and went, I love traveling. Wouldn't it be nice to go to Australia? I've always wanted to go to Australia. So I used it and created something out of nothing. But then I went into box three and I kept thinking about it. I thought, hang on, why am I not going to Australia? And most people say, I haven't got enough time. I haven't got enough money or COVID. And so when it's safe, you can afford it now. True. And you've got time. You work online. Okay. So it went from this imaginary thing in box two to something to actually look forward to. And I used to just look at those pictures just to motivate myself all the time. But now I'm actually going. I've actually booked it. And it was supposed to be last November. It's going to be, well, this November. It's going to be the next November. But it's just a matter of time. Now, that's very powerful because it's gone in my brain from an imaginary thing to motivate myself to a logical, real life thing to motivate myself. All right. But it would have never happened if I hadn't put the pictures on my wall. That would have just been a blue wall. And I will be in Australia next November for a month. OK, so think about yourself. Got to have things to look forward to. There's a brilliant quote in the Bible. Without a vision, people perish. It's very true. You've not got things to look forward to. You just think, eh, what's the point? So create a big list. Just write as many as you can. OK, right. So moving into the last two. Uh, we've got about 10 more minutes and then we've got time for questions. Hopefully this is touching some points. You think, yeah, that makes sense. What about this? Be thinking about some things you want to ask me because a big part of what I do in my business is to help motivate people. So now's the time to ask. Okay, so we're saying when you feel great, fleeting motivation, brilliant, use it, but don't rely on it. Move into box two, falsely motivate yourself, set some deadlines, set some dates, set some goals. Don't wait until you feel good, just do it. Imagine, use your imagination. Then have things to look forward to, whatever they are. Link them back to your important list, your family, your friends, your work, yeah, whatever it is. Not your not important list, forget that. But then how you go about it, these last two types of motivation, this is where people fall down. They're very well-meaning, yeah, I'm going to lose all this weight, I'm going to get this promotion, I'm going to be the best dad. How they apply it, this is where they fall down. So I want to help you. So box four, I want you to write fear or fun. So I struggled to kind of get it into one word. So three words, yeah. fear or fun. Okay. Now this is very much the logical, the how, the practical way you apply yourself and motivate yourself. What I want you to draw is a little fire emoji. I'm not going to show you mine because it's terrible, but try and just draw a little, you know, a little fire, this little flame. Now you can pick this, you choose. If you'd like to join in the chat box, please write in the chat box. If you don't, you can just write it in your little box for if you're trying to motivate yourself to do something, do you motivate yourself through fear and say, oh, Kenny, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. Or oh, Raj, if you don't do this this week, this will not happen. 
And some people that really works for them and they say, oh, yeah, yeah. And that fear motivates them. You know, you need to pay your mortgage or you lose your house. Other people don't like that. They like to be motivated by fun, by positivity. So say it's me and Raj are talking. I say, Raj, I need to lose some weight. And he goes, okay, go to the gym. And then I think, yeah, if I go to the gym, I'll get stronger, I'll lose weight, I'll be fitter. And that positivity motivates me. So I'm motivated by the fun aspect, by the positive. And then the third choice is some people are a bit of both. Sometimes they motivate themselves with fear, sometimes with fun. So you write down in, the, in your chat box, sorry, in your box for fear or fun, whichever works for you, or both. You pick, I don't mind. There's no wrong answer. And if you put it in the chat box as well, that'd be wonderful. That'd be really cool. Are you both? Are you primarily fear? A lot of people I work with in like insurance, tax, finance, they're motivated by fear, <laughs> which is great. It's fine. They make a mistake. Oh, I don't want to make a mistake. Let me just check again. That works for them. Brilliant. And then I might have somebody else who's say a personal trainer and they're more motivated by fun, positive. Okay. So Raj, but fun, sometimes fear. Yeah, fear and excitement. Love this. Great. Use that. If it's a bit of both, great. Yeah. Thanks, but fun. Can you put fun? Great. So whatever you've chosen, do it that way. If you're motivated by fun, don't try and motivate yourself with fear because it's not going to work, <laughs> right? And there's again where people fall down. They go, oh, I've got to do it like this person. No, you don't. Do it your way. Keep it personal to you, all right? So even if it's a fearful situation, you think, all right, I see the positive in this. And then the reason I've got you to draw the fire is I want you to write this little phrase, okay? I'd like to write this. Everything can fuel my fire. I'm going to tell you a little quick story about this. I was doing some running. Everything can fuel my fire. Imagine you got a big fire. Inside. Everything can fuel it. If you put most things on a fire, it burns. Paper, wood, even plastic. Most things will burn on a fire. Some better than others, but most things will burn. And imagine you're somebody who's motivated by fun, but you're experiencing fear. Think, mm, this doesn't really work for me true but you could still try and use it a little bit it might give you a bit of motivation not as much but it might still work so i'm quite a positive person and i thought i was motivated by fun and by positivity and i was running up and down this hill don't ask that's a silly idea but i don't know if you've ever you know when you're working out or exercising your brain goes very negative and you're like you can't do this give up and my brain was to say you're fat you're slow mike just give up horrible <laughs> Rather than try and think positive and address that, I used that negativity in my head. It was almost like anger. And I used it to power me up the hill. And I just was like, go on then, whatever it is, I'll just use this. And I ran up this hill and I almost yelled when I got to the top. I just felt this fuel. I was like, <sighs> and I realized it worked. <laughs> I was like, that worked. And I've realized for me, for some reason, when I'm working out, lifting weights, running, I, I get a lot of negative thoughts. Maybe it's because I'm pushing myself. My body doesn't like it. It doesn't matter. But I expect it now and I use that as fuel. I don't wait until I get positive thoughts. Does that make sense? Yeah. So everything can fuel your fire. Think of the things you've been going through at the moment that are difficult. That can motivate you if you link it back to your important list. My family are on my important list. And my dad had, we thought, a mini stroke earlier this year. And I, was that, I used that as motivation. To look after him and now every time I see him I hug him and I tell him I love him do you know what I mean by that I've used that to fuel the love that I have for him now, I'm not saying everything is good it's not but it can fuel you you think right I don't want this but I'll have it anyway give it here COVID right I'll have that money problems I'll have them as well give it all all of it and it works it really really does Really, really does. Okay. So what we're saying in the fourth way is pick your way, fun, fear, a bit of both, but whatever it is, use it as fuel. Okay. Because if you think you can, you're more likely to do it. If you think it's going to break you, it will. If you think it's not, it won't. It's amazing. So what we're going to do for the last kind of three or four minutes is I want to give you some tools. So this is the fifth thing. So can you see where the, um, the outline is? Yeah. Number five, the framework. We're going to write the word framework around the frame. This is the final F. So somewhere, you know, around the outside here next to the number five, this is the framework. So we're saying there's all these different ways, but a framework is something that holds things together, yeah? And so the best way I've found is to give you just lots of things to go and try. So the best way to do that 
is to give you tools, options, yeah? Because a lot of this is theoretical. You keep it in your mind, in your heart, then you're going to go out and do it. So we're going to go to the tools. Here we go. I'm going to see how many I can get through because I don't want to run over. Raj, you okay for about three more minutes? Is that okay? Yeah, that's super. All right, first tool, motivational people. So if you go to tools, number one, motivational people. I'm going to write the names of two people that are my absolute favorite people to motivate me um, that you can just watch on YouTube, on anything. They're all free videos. Les Brown, African-American stand-up comedian slash motivational speaker, incredible. And Louise Hay. Oh, where to start with Louise Hay? She is just the master of like loving yourself and being kind to yourself. So Les Brown will make you feel you can achieve anything. Louise Brown will remind you that you're beautiful just as you are. And depending on what kind of day you're having, <laughs> they can both help. But they're two, they absolutely motivate me. And any person I've recommended them to has, has loved them. So check them out, those two. If you have other people, share them in the chat box, write them on the list. But motivational people in your real life and also online material, okay? You've got to fuel your motivation. All of this, by the way, yeah, nobody's going to motivate you but you. That can be a little bit scary. But then once you embrace that, you say, okay, it's down to me. Okay, fine. I can do that. The second one is motivational quotes. All right. So make sure you've got quotes. Now with quotes, what I'd recommend is have two and memorize them. Some people love motivational quotes. Some people hate them. They find it very cheesy. But find one that means something to you deep inside because then it will motivate you. You know what I mean by that? It might be something from a religious text. It might be something from a person you've listened to or spoken to. It might be from a writer, a song. It doesn't matter what it is, yeah? One of my favorite, Muhammad Ali said, the heart is a net where love is caught like fish. <laughs> right? He's Islamic and he was a big believer and lover of people. And most people don't know about the charity work he did after he retired. So I love that quote, right? And that motivates me. You can have your own, but pick two, memorize them. Okay, the next one, motivational music. Nothing can change your physiology quicker than listening to music. If you don't believe me, after this, put on a piece of your favorite music and just enjoy the physical feeling and change in your body. It's wonderful. Music is fantastic, especially if you're trying to get yourself going, but also to bring yourself down. If you're stressed out, yeah, music can bring you down as well, all right? The next one is what I call a support team. So number four, these are three types of people I would have to help motivate you. First type, somebody for support. Somebody who's just going to tell you, Kumar, you're brilliant. Stella, I love you. Yeah. Kenny, you're fantastic. And you go to that person when you struggle. The second type of person I would have on your support team is someone for accountability. They're going to say, Kim, I said you're going to do this. Jackson, you haven't done this. Come on, I'm going to hold you to account here. We need to do this. I think back to when we, I used to do jiu-jitsu, and I remember seeing Raj, and some of them higher grades, they will hold you to account if you make mistakes. But you need that to keep standards high. The third type of person I would have is a medical professional, your GP, your local surgery, because you might at some point need to have I don't know, you might break your leg, you might get COVID, you need to have some maybe some medical advice or somebody on hand. It might be a mental health issue, yeah? You need somebody who's a qualified professional to support you, okay? So that's your support team. The uh, next one, last couple, your environment. How to be motivational. Look at all these pictures. They're all clients. <laughs> Australia. Very hard to motivate yourself outside and inside. So just fill the outside. Something interesting about motivation is if it's on the outside, it tends to seep in. And if it's already on the inside, it tends to seep out and help people. So if you've not got a lot on the inside, fill your outside with it. If you've already got quite a lot on the inside, brilliant. Share it on the outside with people. Okay. And then the last um, one is what I call meaning. If you bring some meaning into what you do, you are highly motivated. If you see it as there's no point to it, so like, why bother? You won't feel motivated. So how's, what's the easiest way to bring meaning into your life? Go back to your important list. I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this just because I want to help people. Why did Dr. Sarah Gilbert create a coronavirus vaccine? To help people save lives. And it's amazing. So those are all the different tools. The reason I've given you so many different types is because different things work on different days. 
some days Les Brown might get you through the day. Other days he's not really talking to you. So, but it's the picture of your daughter that gets you through the day. You understand what I'm trying to say, yeah? You use the different tools at different times. Do you need a spanner or a toothbrush? Yeah, you need different things at different times, okay? So we're gonna finish for questions now, but just as we are, one thing I'd like you to do, please, is just before we come to any questions or any reflections, just have a look at that piece of paper. I'm doing very well on a Sunday night. I know it's very late yeah, to fill that in and to spend time with me. Just pick one of your favorite things from today and either draw a circle around it, star it, underline it, highlight it, draw a smiley face next to it. Pick something. If you'd like to share in the chat box, I'd love to know what it is, but do it for yourself more because I don't expect you to remember any of this. Remember I said this at the start, but that one thing you've underlined, that one thing you've circled, that one thing you like, go and apply that. It might be, I'm gonna go check out Les Brown's videos. It might be, I'm gonna motivate myself through fun. It might be, I'm going to create that big list of things to look forward to. It might be, I'm gonna tell the people on my important list that I love them every single day. Whatever it is, just do one thing, yeah? And then you'll start to get some momentum with it, all right? Uh, so Raj, by my, my, my watch, that gives us still some time uh, for questions. What I say is have a look back through that. Look at your diagram. Look at your notes. If there's any questions, feel free. Now's the time to ask them. Raj, I'll hand back to yourself. Brilliant. Well, thank you, um, Michael, for that excellent presentation. Uh, very practical. Made us all involved by writing our own future uh, motivational um, sort of strategy, uh, the, the five types of motivation. And I totally agree. Motivation is in our, in our hands. No one else is going to motivate us. The destiny um, re resides in us. Our actions we need to be accountable for. Uh, but that, that is some really practical information. It's down to earth. Um, I'm sure we, we've got a number of questions from um, our, a lot of our guests are from India. So they must be motivated to come on this call to stay up late <laughs> in the evening. Uh, <laughs> So uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna sort of give you the option to ask any questions. You put them in the chat, or you can um, speak openly. We'll just give people a, a second or two. Yeah, and the thing is as well, sometimes questions or reflection don't come straight away. So you might be sat there going, "I'm good. I don't have anything," and that's okay as well. You know, sometimes things come afterwards when you reflect and you give your brain time to process it or when you go and actually apply it. So Raj has got my contact details. I'm very happy for anybody to contact me at you know, any point to talk about these things. Yeah, Kenny and I and a few others uh, are working on um, a organization. It's a new organization trying to help develop um, individuals, motivate them, entrepreneurship and that. I don't know, Kenny, have you got, are you, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear, I can hear, yeah. I think, I think you've invited a few guests, so, so thank you for that. Um, yeah, any yeah. comments and questions from you? No, it was really good. Uh, I just uh, got to know certain things like the four types of people that motivates you, and it was really great to have four, uh, like support system, accountability, medical professional, and the environment that really, this uh, it was so fascinating after uh knowing all the four things which i could really focus on you know like the need to focus on right now and you know it was very a uh, mirror thing for me to like you know come up with uh, uh this this ideas and thoughts so thank you it was really great thing oh you're very welcome i'll tell you something that's um that's just come up i've got a question from somebody so i'll address that an extra thing you might want to, you might deal with in work, especially with what Raj has just said, if you're trying to motivate other people, are different types of people. I don't like to box people saying you're this, you're that, but you might have heard of phrases introverts and extroverts. I'll write them in the chat box. And they are very useful distinctions to make. Okay, so introverts and extroverts. And what that means is if you gain energy from being around people, you're an extrovert. If being around people, you enjoy it, but it drains you, you lose energy, you're an introvert. Now, I'm actually an introvert. I love people <laughs> and I love helping them, but I need to have my own space and time away to recharge. So when you're trying to motivate people, always just ask them, never tell them what they are. Ask them, you know, do you, do you find it helpful to be around people a lot? Does that give you energy or does it tire you out? 
and that will motivate them in different ways, if that makes sense. So different people get motivated in different ways, depending on their energy. So we've got a question, um, and I'm going to just answer it. So it's from Jackson. Thanks, Jackson. Really good question. What are the factors that affect motivation? Okay, so that's a really good question. One of the biggest ones that affects motivation that most people don't think about, I'm going to answer it slightly differently. There's a man called Thomas Sowell. I would suggest you check him out. And he um, is a, well, he's a very intelligent man. He's an economist. He's a, he's a published author. He is incredibly intelligent. You can just YouTube, you know, interviews. Um, and he talks about the importance of environment because I, I definitely agree with this. Although we can motivate ourselves, we all live within environments, don't we? If you live in a bed sit on your own with nobody around you in the middle of the city, that's a very different environment if you live with a wife or a husband or a partner and seven children in the country. You've got a certain amount of money. You understand. So environment can definitely be one that can affect both positively and negatively. The second thing that can actually affect your motivation, one of the biggest ones is a lack of meaning right so here's another person if you like to read if you like to listen to audiobooks i definitely suggest check this guy out victor frankl victor frankl was a survivor from the holocaust in the second world war and his entire family were killed and upon surviving it he his life had only just begun so imagine as we come out of covid you're thinking what's next how do i motivate myself after what i've just been through and the answer he came up with is he said, find the thing you love the most and build a life around it. And I love that. And what I found is most people, if you ask them, so think of the entrepreneurs and the people, the young people trying to help, they don't actually know what it is. If you've got a piece of paper and a pen and said, what's the most important thing in your life? Draw a circle around it and let's build your life around. They don't know. They don't. So they, they experience a severe lack of meaning and purpose in their lives. And that's very painful. So I'd say even more than environment, a lack of meaning in what you're doing and who you are is one of the most common and painful factors that affect motivation. Because if you've got no meaning, what's the point? <laughs> it's why with this session today, we had three key learning objectives. You know what the individual model is, the five methods. The second was how to do it in a way that works for you personally. You know that now, yes, objective. And the third one is hopefully now you see it's not just a feeling, it's a process. So that gave meaning and structure to what we learned. We didn't just chat tonight. Can you see what I'm saying? And people don't have a lot of that. Or they have, they have it, but it doesn't suit them. If you can help them to discover that, it is one of the biggest gifts you can give somebody. So definitely, I think Raj and Kenny and people working on that project, just keep that in mind with people. It isn't often the money or the outcomes. It's a sense of meaning and purpose. And if you can help somebody achieve that and, and discover that, Oh, it's one of the best things you can do in life, really. So that's quite a long answer, but I wanted to give you quite a lot in that answer. Thank you. Um, but there may be another question, um, but I, I was going to pose a question to, uh, to um, my father, in fact, because he's one of, one of the senior members on this talk today. He's still in his 80s, but he's still motivated. He's talking all around the world on Zoom talks. So what keeps people like yourself motivated in your 80s, Dad? And maybe we, we can learn from yourself and others and um, to, sh to share uh, on top of what Michael's saying. I think you have to come off mute. Uh, yes. In fact, I was very interested to watch you all young people. And as I said, I'm the oldest. I'm 86 years old. And I retired as GP 20 years ago. And I had no mot motivation to do anything until this pandemic came along because I was not familiar with this so-called modern technology, even getting in contact with each other. So first thing I did was, I was stuck for nine months in India. And what I did was try to get into this platform of like meeting people in the Zoom or Google Meet. And I've just about learned enough to cope with it. So in fact, I had a meeting myself yesterday and some of the um, participants, they were there as well. So they're very keen to get to know new things and old things. And what motivated me, so I've done that. But today's talk, I, although I quite enjoyed it, 
but I wasn't able to catch up the way you were trying to draw on the map. Sure. But I, not on the, this box, but I was writing down different places. So, because whatever, I think with the age, things get slower down and it takes me a bit of time to understand them, to take in. But I got the points, what you were trying to say, and I'm very happy that I managed to join today. Because I was telling Raj yesterday, probably I won't be able to do because I'm doing every day with some, I get so many invitations to join uh, with these meetings, especially people from India. And I, since I've retired, I go to India every, <clears throat> every year and spend a few months with our own people. But this year, obviously, we couldn't go. So at least most of the people in India, younger people or my generation, very few left. They know that I'm interested for the people in India, especially the so-called indigenous people. Uh, Maybe something new, Michael, for you, indigenous people. That means we are the original inhabitants of the India, although the government of India doesn't believe that. But still, we believe we are the oldest inhabitants of India. So I'm uh, interested, and what I'm more interested in is how to help the people of my uh, group of people, so-called indigenous people, because in spite of 75 years of independence, we're still far behind from the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I gave them a talk about the education, education, education. Unless we are educated, it's going to be very difficult, because at the moment, we can't see things which is available. We do not know about our right, and we are voiceless. We can't speak up. So the only way we can do is to educate ourselves, at least basic education up to say 10 plus 2, or A level, whatever they call it, and then look for the new way of livelihood. At the moment, we only know on agriculture and leveling. And those jobs are um, not available, even those jobs are not available. So I'm encouraging people to know the new skill. Like go to the polytechnic after schooling and learn, like become electrician, plumbers, or whatever things which you can be used for. Now, of course, we need some higher education as well. So if somebody is clever, able, they should go and do degrees and PhD, whatever they want to do it. But for majority of people, the basic education is essential, and that's what I'm trying to encourage our people. And thank you very much. Wow, that's amazing. That is, thank you so much. I don't know what, to, I, Raj, I don't know how we respond to that. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really encouraging to see, uh, you know, especially my father and uh, um, obviously any senior person still being motivated in life to learn new t- technology. Uh, to he talks about the United Nations uh, on behalf of the indigenous people. And um, so a lot of the individuals on this call uh, are from India or or from the similar background as myself, um, who may be slightly disadvantaged, but at the same time, in motivating ourselves to, you know, to learn more, educate, inspire others. Uh, and, you know, there's a whole a, a mass of fantastic future for us, so long as we, we strive and, and c- continue to contribute to society. Uh, and uh, talks like yourself, Michael, you know, it's really good to, to share w- with this group. Uh, and I'm sure we'll have you invited to uh, future presentations when we are talking um, to this group. And, and uh, you know, this, this sort of inception at the moment, we're looking to inspire the youth of today to, to really take a grasp of the future. Mm. But it takes knowledge, it takes the tools, it takes the motivation. Um, and it takes, you know, meeting people like yourself to help us on that journey. Thank you. But I think what's amazing, Mr. Saron, both of you, is you have that strong meaning and purpose. You've got that. You know, it, it's within. I can hear the passion when you talk. Uh, and because you've got that, you'll be fine. I, I know you will. You know, you can't you can't give that to somebody else, but you can help them to discover that in themselves. And education, absolutely right. I, yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> incredible. Absolutely incredible. So. Um, because, in fact, I was born during the British Raj in India, really? 12 years before independence. And I knew I met one of the commissioners, top civil servant, the British one, in the 70s. And he was surprised to see me. 
the first thing is you, have, you are an indigenous person and you yes. come from the place which he call it the place of land of darkness. Wow. You come from out of the darkness and then you are um, qualified as a doctor and, uh, and of all the places you are practicing in UK and in Liverpool, whose English he couldn't understand himself. <laughs> <laughs> No, nobody can. <laughs> Archer has written a lot of books about us. Right. That's fascinating. I, I did not know. And, it's, and then uh, I was the, more or less, I think probably I was the first uh, tribe of my kind who came to UK 55 yeah. years ago. That's amazing. I think that's why he said about education, but it works both ways because you're teaching me now. So I think that's the power of education, isn't it? You can empower a people, but then you share that, yeah. like, almost testimony with other people and they learn. And yeah, I get it. That's amazing. Wow. So oh. hopefully, hopefully younger generation will get some inspiration from my experience. Because there were hardly few schools, villages in those days. Not a single college in the whole of the district, which is a huge area. Mm. Uh, and people used to cycle, you know, 10 miles or walk 10 miles just to go to school those days. And um, yeah. uh, we're fortunate now that it doesn't have to happen as much, but it's, it's, you know, it's an inspiring story for all of us to, to know that, um, you know, you can achieve great things from very little uh, in your life and to help others in the world out there and our community is going to make a real difference. Um, are there any other questions for Michael? Because I know I want to keep you any longer because uh, especially those in India, it's probably after midnight now. Um, <laughs> uh, but thank you to those who, who managed to stay on um, on board for this uh, evening's presentation. It will be recorded. Um, so is there anything else, uh, any other questions, comments, or an anything that you'd like to raise, Michael? No, I just want to say thank you very much to everybody for being here, for coming with an open mind, being willing to learn, engage. Um, what I always say with everything is just let it wash over you and occasionally the odd thing will stick and that's all, all it takes. Just one or two things can make all the difference. So thank you very much for being here, everybody. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Michael, once again. And we look forward to seeing you at our next presentation. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye.